the northeastern part of China, there is a land that carries a splendid history and culture, preserving countless sagas of courage and wisdom. Let's step into Liaoning, a place famed for its world cultural heritage sites. Follow the footprints of history, listen to ancient tales, and together experience the liveliness and happiness of the people who live here. My name is Zina. Today I'm at the foot of Munu Mountain in Benshi Liaoning. As I lift my head and gaze at the lush and lofty main peak, I marvel at its majesty, unusualness, and look of a verdant shield. Its shape resembles five elegant fairies. It's said that, in early ancient times, there were five sisters, all with extraordinary abilities, who garrisoned this mountain, removing violence and protecting the people. And as per historical research, in 37 BCE, Prince Chumo of the Northern Buyu Kingdom established the Kingdom of Gaiguli here, making Munu Mountain his capital, thereby unrolling this historical scroll. Munu Mountain City, a significant historical city with a continuous history of over 2,000 years, and exhibits a unique cultural landscape. At one man gateway, where two cliffs facing each other as if cleaved by a giant axe, you would only see a streak of clear blue sky when looking upwards, making one gasp at the genius of nature's craftsmanship. After climbing up 999 steps, you finally reach the viewing platform engulfed in a sea of clouds and pine waves. Here, the ancient pines sway, often becoming shrouded in mist, making one feel as if they're in a fairyland. On the highest part of the mountain city, at the lookout platform, you can see undulating ancient stone wall remnants all along the cliff edges. While the mountain body nearby appears magnificent, those in the distance look beautiful. The vast Huanglong Lake in the distance shimmers in the sun. Looking south, you will see the Hangjian River flowing around the county town of Huanren, reminiscent of a giant Taju diagram. When you look down from the sky, you can see that Wunu Mountain City is strategically situated in a formidable location, displaying a grand and imposing spectacle. The main peak of the Wunu Mountain is 823 meters above sea level, with cliffs on all sides rising vertically up to 100 meters. The top of the mountain is flat, stretching 1.5 kilometers in the north-south direction and three to 500 meters in the east-west direction. On the eastern side of the main peak, remnants of the ancient city wall can be seen following the counters of the mountain. Some sections of the wall were built with long stone slabs for the base, piled on top with layers of wedged-shaped stones to reduce tension. These stones are larger at the bottom and smaller on top. They were not held together with adhesive, yet they have withstood the test of time without collapsing. The location, layout, architecture, and stone processing techniques of the mountain city of Wunu Mountain reflect the traditional methods of building mountain cities by the northern Chinese ethnic groups. Yet, it also displays innovative elements, thus establishing itself as a model for mountain cities in China and perhaps even Northeast Asia. The mountain city still shows visible traces of ancient buildings, barracks and posts, Granaries, reservoirs, watchtowers, and other ruins invoke a sense of ancient poetry settling in time. Built on top of the mountain, Wunu Mountain City is the first discovered defensive town constructed on high ground in Asia, and therefore known as the first defensive city of the East. Even in the height of summer, the mountain remains refreshingly cool, making it an ideal retreat from the summer heat. The natural beauty of Wunu Mountain and its historical significance complement each other. Not far from the foot of the mountain, the Kiaru town of Banshi, located at the foothills of the Changbai mountain range, has been rich in Songhua stones since ancient times. These stones are hard and dense with exquisite patterns and bright colors, found in shades of violet, emulating mists and clouds, green like crystal clear water, and yellow akin to colored glaze. 
The Kiaru town of Benshi has long been a hub for folk ink stone making the Northeast. With its work being recognized as Kiaotu Inkstone, Liao Inkstone, and Benshi Lake Inkstone, among other terms. During the reign of Emperor Kongqi of the Qing Dynasty, the Songhua Inkstone had become the official inkstone used in the imperial count. The production of the imperial Songhua Inkstone in the royal court was initiated in the 28th year of Emperor Kongxi's reign and personally established by Emperor Kongxi himself, who even wrote the treatise on making inkstones. The Songhua Inkstone, with its oil-like ink release and smooth writing property, has been acclaimed as the supreme among all inkstones. Today, Fang Waiyuding, having inherited his father's mantle, strives hard and seeks persistently. Through five generations of inheritance, she has become the youngest female master of making Sanghua inkstone. The production of the imperial inkstone embraces the traditional imperial procedure used in the ancient court, following rigorous rules. The selection of the stone for the Sanghua inkstone is very particular. Most are made from green Songhua stones with a gentle and pure color. The stone box usually features shades of purple green or yellow Songhua stone. The shape of the ink stone is generally rectangular or oval, with freeform ink stones being avoided. In terms of engraving technique, the skills from jade carving are incorporated, be it shallow carving, deep carving, and open work carving. The lines should be smooth and the tension should be restrained to embody a balanced beauty. The patterns demonstrate the imperial grandeur, often featuring ancient sacrificial vessel motifs, combined with symbols of good fortune, presenting a refined and understated style. When the lid of the inkstone is lifted, the jade-like texture and delicate patterns attract attention. I can't help but want to experience the infinite charm of Chinese calligraphy. This Songhua inkstone is for me the most unique cultural memory of this trip. Beautiful views, beautiful inkstones, and delicious food all complement each other perfectly. Now let's taste the specialty of Huan Ren of Benshi, the Lagu Tofi. The Lagu the crayfish of northeastern China only survives in extremely clean streams, hence its delicious and sweet flavor. The lagu tofu is made by boiling and coagulating minced lagu meat, served with fresh vegetables and simply seasoned, hence the delicious dish with the taste that is rich and delicate, and the soup that is especially flavorful, leaving a lasting impression. It is a true delicacy among Banshee's traditional cuisine, In the ancient mountain city, I travel through a thousand years in dialogue with history. I am enchanted by the beautiful scenery, impressed by the beautiful ink stones, and mesmerized by the delicious food. On this magnificent land with its deep cultural roots, every inch is filled with gem-like heritages. I will remember this colorful city known as Benchi Liaoning.